Hey there, do you have an aging relative that you're perhaps worried about falling over in the bathroom? Well, today we're going to be doing a bit of a shootout on fall sensors. So we're going to be having a look at two options. We're going to look at one from Seed Studio and we're going to have a look at one from Aquara. So millimeter wave radar has been around for a while now. I started playing with these just over two years ago with the 24 gigahertz versions, which could sense people in a room without moving. They could even count the number of people in the room. But recently I've noticed there's more and more talk about the use of these devices for sleep detection as well as fall detection. Now these ones rely on the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave radar sensors. So today we're gonna to have a look at a couple of these and see just how they work. So I'm looking at two devices from either end of the price scale. So the first one we're gonna look at is the one from Seed Studio. This is the Shiao 60 gigahertz millimeter wave fall detection sensor. And this one is designed using a Seed Studio uh, ESP32 along with their special millimeter wave sensor. You can see it comes in this little 3D printed case and it's got inside of this, we can see here, it's got the sensor down here, it's got a motherboard and then it's got the ESP32 over here. Now they do say over here that this is a early beta build, so not ready for protect Production. So I wasn't highly expectant of getting a good result here, but I thought I would give it a try anyway. You can see price-wise for a sensor with an ESP32 device plus the case as well, a 3D printed case. Let's, let's have a look and see how this performs. Now this has been specially made for ESP Home. So the beauty about this is it pulls directly into Home Assistant and it also has an ambient line sensor which is included with the device. So the second device we're going to be looking at is this Aquara sensor, Presence Sensor FP2. Um, now I have done a full review video on this product already and I've also done a review of the sleep sensing component to this device. Um, this is a much more expensive sensor. This is around 83 US dollars. So let's see how these two compare. It works very well on the zone detection and was also surprisingly good with the sleep detection. So today we're going to try out and see what it's like with its fall detection abilities. So the Seed Studio connected immediately into Home Assistant after I powered it on and connected it to my Wi-Fi network. As you can see, there's a couple of options here. We have a control over the little RGB LED on the device, and we then have the information here. So we have falling information. It's either safe or it's alarming you. We have the person information, so that's person detection. We have this illumination, so that can tell us how much light is in the room. And then we've got a few simple configurations here. We can configure the height threshold. We can configure the install height and the set sensitivity. Next, I stuck the sensor up to the underside of my ceiling light. And then I walked over and started practicing a few times, falling over to try and simulate the detection of the sensor. So I tried this a number of times and it would certainly detect that I was there, but however I tried it falling, fast, slow, whatever, I could not get the falling information to trigger. I even tried changing these settings, sensitivity, the heights, I even switched the sensor around in case it was the wrong way around, but I could not get it to work. Next I went along to the Aquara device now, I'd already connected it earlier for the previous use, but I now need to change it from zone detection over to fall detection. So this will now go and download the new software for the fall detection mode, install it onto the device for us, and it will then start explaining to you how to install it. So it shows that it needs to be installed between 2.5 and 2.8 meters above the floor, and then you get a radius around which it will actually start sensing. So both these sensors are limited to a certain radius. The next thing we wanna do is it's got this AI smart learning tool where it will effectively 
start sensing what is in the environment around the actual sensor and it takes about 30 seconds to do this and it says that this will actually give it a much better chance of actually reading the fall when it happens. So once it had done this it told me that that was successful and that it was all set up. So there we go you can see now that it is in a normal mode for fall detection and that presently there's no one in the actual zone so it's not making any detections at all. So now you'll see I'm going to walk into the zone and the moment I fall down there we go it triggers the falling down. Now what was really cool was that if I actually walked and lay down slowly it wouldn't trigger. So this is actually just amazing. So currently there's no way of getting the information from the Aquara app through to Home Assistant or any direct links that we can actually trigger an automation in Home Assistant based on the falling sensor. But still, I'm really impressed with the way that the sensor is working. These guys have obviously spent a lot of time of getting the software working to allow this to working. I am actually just blown away with this Aquara FP2 sensor in all the three different modes that it's operating on. With the seed sensor, um, I'm confident that the hardware is really good on this device. The issue I think is currently with the software, as they've explained, it is in still a beta mode and they're still testing it. So I'm really hopeful that this will get to a level where it will be really useful in the future. And the awesome thing about this is that it's going to be fully integrated into Home Assistant with ESP Home. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe and I look forward to catching up with you in the next one. Bye for now.